Today comes from the Minnesota Public Radio News, and it is entitled University of Minnesota Launches Cannabis Research Center. Ooh, that sounds exciting. So the University of Minnesota School of Public Health launched a new cannabis research center on Thursday. I guess that would be yesterday. The center will conduct research aimed at assessing the health impacts of the state's recent legalization of recreational cannabis for adults and will help inform future policies and practices uh, as the new law is rolled out. When state lawmakers made Minnesota the 23rd state in the nation to legalize recreational cannabis use in May, they set aside $2.5 million in annual funding to come from cannabis sales tax to fund the center to better understand how cannabis use affects different Minnesota populations and communities. University officials said that the new center will focus on work to better understand how cannabis interacts with substances such as opioids and alcohol, as well as the health effects of cannabis on underage users. Quote, for young people, the brain is still developing. And so there's some concerns about the effects of cannabis on brain development, said public health uh, professor Tracy Toomey, the center's inaugural director. And earlier, <clears throat> people start to use cannabis. There's some concern that they may develop a cannabis use disorder later in life. The center also plans to prioritize research on how cannabis legalization affects public policy and health equity, whatever health equity is. There's something for you to think about, Rico. What is health equity? I've never heard oh, that boy. term. <laughs> uh, what we see sometimes happens with other substances like alcohol and tobacco is sometimes that communities are disproportionately targeted by marketing or maybe they have more stores or dispensaries in the neighborhood because some of the people want to buy product. They don't want uh, those stores in their neighborhood, Toomey said to NPR's Minnesota Now adding that the goal should be to ensure that marketing and distribution are fairly distributed across the state. Recreational cannabis for use in adults, uh, 21 and older, became legal in the state in August. While some tribal dispensaries are o open, others can't open until state officials introduce a licensing system, which may not happen until early 2025. That's the end of this article. So I think this is this is very interesting because unlike um, some of the other universities in other states, uh, I think most notably uh, here at the University of Vermont, um, states like Lake Superior College in Michigan, Northern Michigan University, are actually offering uh, plant touching. Uh, curricula for students so students could actually grow plants I think they're restricted to growing hemp but we all know that growing hemp is similar to growing cannabis and they're teaching the fundamentals of the of the industry as we know it including you know supply chain economics understanding regulations understanding you know various aspects of the business but I think the interesting aspect that I see that's different here is that they're actually talking about researching the actual products that are for sale. As we know, uh, Minnesota has basically opened the door on these uh, low THC beverages, and that business is booming in Minnesota. Um, and I think other states are following suit to that as well. Um, so those... Uh, qualify for hemp because they're below the 0.3% THC in the finished beverage. Um, but um, I, I find it really interesting because I think the more university programs are doing research as well as teaching, the more it's going to legitimize uh, these products and that they're not as dangerous as maybe they were once uh, thought of. But I'd be interested in what everybody else 
as to say, uh, Dr. Talleyrand and, and others. And uh, that's my story today coming from the state of Vermont. This is Dr. Mark on High at Nine News. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Mark. I, I think this story is uh, on the surface interesting, but if you look at the history, yes, research in California, you know, they've blown through tens of millions of dollars, you know, trying to show how bad cannabis is, how people are having trouble driving or how it's hurting your lungs. And they, they just, you know, they're, they're really seeking the problems in it. Meanwhile, you know, we don't even understand what what uh, cultivars make you energetic and what cultivars make you, uh, you know, sedative hypnotic. We're, we're not really understanding the benefits of the plant. We don't know which plants are, are better for cancers. They're not really looking to study the positive parts of cannabis. They're really trying to find what's wrong with it. Um, so on the surface, it seems good, but, uh, you know, I'm concerned. I think we've wasted millions in California trying to do the same. Right. I, I would, I would, I would agree with you on certain aspects in that. Yes. If you're trying to tap into NIDA related funding, NIDA is the National Institute of Drug Abuse to get weed from the Mississippi uh, grow or the other grows that they're using now. Uh, yes, things have to be directed towards negative impacts of cannabis. And I, I think that one of the things that greatly hampers research is schedule one listing because in order to have a schedule one license you need to be inspected by the dea and you need to have all kinds of levels of approval uh, from your university and it becomes very difficult at the university level to do i think what they're proposing to do here which is let's just go to a store buy some hemp D9 beverages and bring them into the lab and, and, and test them and analyze them and maybe look in maybe like a observational type of clinical study, you know, what, what these products that we just legalized, okay, and, and people are buying, what these products are actually doing to people and are people becoming addicted? You, you know, it's interesting, in Minnesota, you can go to a bar and now get a THC beverage. They're calling them mocktails or whatever, or not cocktails, not alcoholic at all. But now you're getting THC beverages being served in bars. And I think there's some, you know, lack of regulation or lack of foresight by the state to basically come in and try to regulate that. But I think it's really proactive for a state to say, look, these products are available in our state and we really don't know what their impact is going to be on chronic and acute aspects of human health. Let's study this, right? We can buy these things legally. Typically, you can't bring cannabinoids or cannabis onto a university campus because of that whole Schedule One thing. So again, removing this from the schedule would decomplicate that. But I think it's really progressive for a state to say, look, we're going to take some of the tax revenues that we're generating from the sale of these products and we're going to see that these products are actually safe for our population to consume it makes sense it really does um dr mark uh, i believe that uh, um, health equity was an extension of social <laughs> equity uh, and social equity is it's just i mean it's a marketing buzzword and um first i think i heard it uh, from the knox doctors first um, using health equity as um, just from a, uh, from a medical standpoint, uh, trying to get the same access uh, to medicine as a whole uh, to people of color, communities of color, the same access that uh, white folks have privilege to as well. So um, this, I believe that's my understanding. Of it. I it, it, from, uh, Dr. Rachel am I alone to think that such a term shouldn't even exist in the universe? I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you, Dr. Mark. I'm I'm with you. It on shouldn't that. need. To, it shouldn't need to exist. Exactly. I would say that's what that's so what he said. Have, um, when you have the yeah, when you have the uh, the black, reality, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, black mother uh, uh, mortality rate uh, the way that it is. Uh, when you have uh, uh, like, like black folks, myself included, they sent my ass home when I was dying uh, from the ER. And they sent me home with some ibuprofen 
to only just get get better. Like a lot of that stuff just doesn't happen uh, to our white counterparts. So uh, I think that's where it comes from. We shouldn't, in a perfect world, we wouldn't we wouldn't need to bring up stuff like that, but it is what it is. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. I know you're chomping at the bit over there. Yeah, yeah, Say yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I, I, I think, I, I, I think, I think it's more of a socioeconomic thing more than it is a race thing at, at all. Um, when when it comes to this health equity, because the reality of it is this: is some people can afford amazing insurance that gives them access to whatever the hell they could possibly want and more, and then you have a lot of people that have basic, just either no insurance or very low. Um, unaffordable insurance and you just basically get treated like trash and that's just what it is i think it's more of a socioeconomic thing i don't believe it's a color thing i mean it's not it's both <laughs> it's <laughs> both <laughs> colors involved yeah well, well colors are involved because 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 there are colors you know what i mean people use them to judge People do natural. Do. People naturally do judge. Well, and we're all colored is people. Black man yep. in the, is he a large black man in the ER saying that he's in excruciating pain? Is a ten out of ten. He sent him home with some ibuprofen, and he almost dies. You know. Yeah. No. I. I. I get it, bro. I've. I've been. I've been overdosed by by doctors on medicine, and so. 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 I. I, I get it. I totally. I totally understand it. Like I'm not. I'm saying that it's a real thing, but I'm just saying that I, that I think it happens. I think it's more of a socioeconomic yeah. thing as opposed to an individual and, race thing. And, and it goes back to the you know uh, um, the Rockefellers and uh, J.P. Morgan um, uh, creating the medical industry. Mm -hmm. uh, they had like different uh, they had mm -hmm. different bullshit studies on black people. You know, from the size of our brains uh, to the pain threshold, like all different kinds of stuff that just did not exist. And a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of that's permeated into modern day know-how, mm -hmm. you know, and the people still believe a lot of that crap. So... A lot of people, people Put that in your pipe and smoke. People, Jason, people do believe you know? a lot of crap. I mean, you look at all the look at all the Minds Project Sam effects. But on that, we're going to keep this train rolling.